And as we move forward uh, in, in, our, in our program tonight, uh, and wherever you are uh, around the world, we have a, a great man of God, uh, just a phenomenal story, a story of miracles, a story of just unbelievable twists and turns. And, and if I told you the story, you wouldn't believe it. You would think it was something out of the movies, so much so that there is a movie in the works right now because of the life uh, that this man of God uh, has lived. Uh, he is the CEO and founder of Danny Wallace Ministries right here in Atlanta, Georgia. He's an author. He's an evangelist, national conference speaker, formal la former label recording artist for Brentwood Records. Uh, his testimony of deliverance from, from uh, childhood sex abuse, homosexuality, and a complete healing from AIDS is going to change your life. You need to call someone right now. Get them in front of a TV. And let us welcome and celebrate the miracle that is Danny Wallace. God bless you, God. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Well, I mean, I've kind of already let the cat out of the bag. You did, right you out are, of the yeah, bag. Let's, you know, let's just go right for it. God is already doing some significant things tonight. We started with a young man who's moving, progressing in leadership, and then we came on to the next level with Dr. Hart Ramsey saying, we don't have to work so hard. There's grace for us. There's rest in Christ. And then here you are. You're literally uh, both of those kind of wrapped in one, and God is taking you through so many things um, first question I want to ask is, how does one overcome such a past uh, to lead a ministry that actually encourages forgiveness, joy, and freedom? I'll tell you what, uh, everything that they've shared tonight, they shared my story. Uh, other than the young man who was first, and he talks about coming from six generations of, uh, of pastors, right. I, I can't even imagine it. Uh, you couldn't take a shovel and dig up a pastor anywhere <laughs> in my heritage or in my family. Uh, but I was sitting there thinking, you know, where God has taken me, where my papa has taken me on my journey. Being so severely abused uh, as a child, uh, always spending my time uh, trying to stay a couple of steps ahead of a predator who was my own father, who had abused me from the time I was five until I married my wife at 17. And then from that, being so confused, having missed the love of a father, that, that doorway that's opened with a lack of affirmation, and, and then... Uh, uh, finding deliverance from homosexuality, uh, the, the the pastor, the second pastor who spoke so much about when we don't have that background, we don't have that heritage, how we become something, that, uh, just a mirror image of whoever is near us. Yes. That was my story. Uh, my book is called Masquerade. My life was one masquerade. Uh, I, I really, at the end of the day, wanted exactly what you want, John, what everyone in this audience wants, what everyone around the world wants. At the end of our day, we want to know that we matter. We want to be able to look into someone's eyes and know that we matter. Yes. What, what I didn't have as a child and through all those years is knowing that I mattered. But I sat over there for a moment listening to the guys, and especially that precious young man at the very beginning, so young, so full of an anointing, such a heritage behind him. And, 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 and God just touched me on the back, and as my papa always does, and he reminded me that I come from the very first generation because my papa walked to the edge of a blackened universe and he said, let there be light, and boom, the lights came on. Yes, sir. And that's how far back... That's how far back all of our heritage goes. All of us who are sitting here tonight, this great music from, from Eddie James, a, a man so anointed, everyone that we've talked about in the kingdom, those who are needing to rest, those who are burdened tonight, those who feel overwhelmed, those who tonight don't even have a clue what anyone's been talking about because you're so broken and you're, you're in such despair. Let me tell you that my papa, has a plan for you. Yes. He's weaving the garment. He is strategically placing threads. And so I'm here tonight, and I made it this far to take a long route to answer your question because what the second pastor said is so true. We 
we are sitting here because of a strategic plan of God that it is not out of our gifting. It is not out of who we think we are. That's right. It's not out of the personal cage we bring to the base of God's freedom tree where birds are free to fly at will from branch to branch, tree to tree, destiny to destiny. And we come along with our cage and our idea and we feel like that those who love the Lord, those who are born again, those who are in the family of God, this is what you'll look like, this is what you'll dress like, this is what your gift will do for you, this is what church you'll serve in. Listen, wherever you are tonight, we are where we are because our Papa has a plan, He has a destiny, and what He's saying to all of us tonight through everything that's been said is all along you've had the power in you to walk to the furthermost point of the boundary you've already set for yourself. Wow. And we're all flying tonight to the furthermost point of the boundary we've set for ourselves. And so what Papa is saying to us is, walk out there in faith, take your foot, knock that boundary down, spread your wings of faith, and fly to the ultimate place of your destiny. That's what he wants for us. That's what he wants for us. Danny, your, your story is, is um, so impactful and, and is really impacting me. It's very difficult to continue uh, because I myself uh, battled through an incident of sexual abuse when I was four and a half years old. Okay. Not at the hands of a family member, but I, I, I understand the battle for identity and where the enemy would like to plant seeds that would cause you to wonder if God ever loves you. If God is real, how could he let this happen? I'm sure there are people watching right now. There may be people in this audience who have been victims of abuse. Can you speak to people all over this world who have gone through that, who may have a question about God's love? God, how could you love me and let this happen to me? I can tell you tonight, and you won't understand these first words, but hear my heart. I cherish my childhood. I cherish every step that I've walked because that journey has placed me dead center of the destiny that God has for me. I'm 57 years old and only now am I ready to stretch my arms out and humbly but proudly also slip that garment on that I know my papa has been weaving for me all along. So those of you who have been abused, you've been told all of your life that you're unworthy, uh, you're nothing, you'll never be anything. My father told me that every day of my life. If I, it, Just in case I'd forgotten it, every day Jesus. he would remind me, you're nothing, I regret the day you were born, you will never be anything. Well, duh. Wow. Here we are tonight. Yes! Here we are tonight. Yes. You, listen to me tonight. You, you are not defined by where you've been. You are defined by where you're going. And I'm telling you tonight that where you're going, the power of that choice is within you. It's been there all along. And so what our Papa is telling us, John, yes, yes. is go to the furthermost point of the boundary you have set for yourself, take the boundary down, spread your wings of faith, and fly to the destiny that our Papa has for us. Wow. Wow. Danny, do you have a book? Yes. The book is called Masquerade, A True Story of Unmasked Freedom. Right. Uh, tell us what people can expect from this book, because there are very... Uh, just I can imagine some places that you had to go through and go to 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 get this material. Is this something that that somebody that may just kind of be on the edge of healing? Is this a tool that will further push them into the presence of this the Lord? book is for everyone? Because let's be honest for a moment. All of us have been trained to wear masks. As I said a while ago, at the end of all of our days, at, at the end of every 24 hour period, there is there is no difference in all of us. We want to be accepted. We want to know that we matter. Masquerade, a true story of unmasked freedom, is the, uh, is the unbridled, transparent details of a life that the enemy saw that God was raising up a servant that I need to go and inspire those who have been so discarded, 
so beaten down. I need someone to stand out in courage and tell them that I have a destiny for them. The enemy recognized that, so the details of this book take you all across the journey of every stop that the enemy pulled out to try to be sure that I wouldn't be sitting here tonight because he knows who's sitting on the other side of that camera. He knows who is sitting all around the world tonight feeling that, you know, the moment before I turned this television on, I was ready to give up. I felt that I was unworthy. I had become and taken on as my identity all that had been spoken over me. What masquerade does, and it is for everyone, even those who feel that they're at the pinnacle of their faith, let me assure you, at the pinnacle of your faith, there is a large amount of our life, a large amount of our decisions, a, a huge portion of all that we're doing, if we will be quite honest, we have masked ourselves to make sure that we're acceptable and received by those in our circumference of influence. Wow. But he whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. Uh, this book truly, truly pulls back the veil of, of all that the enemy would bring into our lives to deceive us and inspire us to step into the light of transparency and experience that deep breath of freedom yes. that only comes from Jesus Christ and in Him alone. Hallelujah. Um, a lot of the things, a lot of the your life story are, are issues and topics that the church uh, is, quite honestly, very uncomfortable uh, sure. in addressing. Uh, it's not spoken of um, in, in many church circles. And I understand you personally answer thousands of emails that go to your website every month. Yes from people who relate to your life story. Why do you believe uh, that some segments of the church uh, have a fear when it comes to topics of abuse and, and homosexuality and, and deliverance? Well, you know, there was a time when I got all self-righteous and up in myself and and felt that, that, that the reason the church was not touching these subjects was because they didn't care. Uh, but I truly, John, do not believe that's the case. I believe that is so rare that it shouldn't even be spoken of. I believe that across the church at large, people feel helpless. They don't understand what they're dealing with. You know, the enemy has made sure that that which we stay silent over, that is, that is the very lock on the door of the stronghold itself. I often say, uh, especially some of the major strongholds like, like the silence over child abuse or homosexuality, the enemy cannot maintain that stronghold without the allegiance of the organized church. Wow. It is our silence over these issues that maintains the lock on the door. If you don't believe it, look back across the last 2,000 years and, and, for instance, how much real freedom has come over the subject, say, of even homosexuality. Uh, very little, but that's because we stand and guard the door and we keep the lock of silence on it. If we ever wake up and realize exactly what the enemy is doing in that stronghold and that we're looking at broken children, yes. we're not really looking at perverted adults. That's that's the leaves of manifestation that the enemy wants us to focus on. Wow. But the deep roots of that tree go into early childhood and we're talking about brokenness. Who in the church doesn't have a deep compassion for a broken child. So just by taking the curtain, the veil, and pulling it back, uh, you remember the movie The Wizard of Oz, you know, the awesome and powerful Wizard of Oz, and Toto jumps down, pulls the curtain back, and there's the old man back there pulling the levers, and he's like, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, and he's, he's pulling the curtain back. That's exactly what the enemy hopes the church will never do. He needs us to maintain the silence because it is our silence that holds the lock. Think for a moment. Think for a moment. If we break that silence, we open a door and, and set forth a freedom for all kinds of strongholds, these uncomfortable subjects you're talking about, that could never come wow. without, without us doing that. Danny, your, 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 your testimony of the miraculous, the healing power of God in your life, uh, particularly with what you walked through as a child, is nothing short of miraculous. Uh, I just want to ask you... Um, one last question. Our time seems to just sure. be running from us. Sure. But you said in a recent interview that the truth of what we believe and preach can be viewed in reality by looking at a man's love for his family. And even after all you've walked through, you have this, this pervasive love for your family. Can you elaborate on that? 
Well, I have three wonderful sons. I, uh, of all people, uh, the enemy made sure that I would believe that I didn't deserve such. My wife is here tonight. We married when we were 17 years old. Uh, next year, we'll have been married 40 years. Uh, you know, You know my oldest son. Yeah, your son did the programs for my wedding. Yes. His uh, son did the programs for, for my So I have three wonderful sons, three daughters by way of their wives, and uh, and five beautiful grandchildren. Listen, I often say, when you hear men of God all around the country speak of, of if you'll do this and you'll do this, this is what God will do for you, and this is what you'll become, and, and we all have our personal cage, and we all have our proclamation. If you want to know what that translates to look like in real life, look no further than the how much... That that man loves his wife and his children. Because, let me assure you, that man does not love God, nor will he love you any greater than he loves that wife and those children. And unfortunately, the legacy we're leaving across America today is that we as evangelicals are abandoning our families at a rate that is astronomical. What God is calling us back to is a faithfulness at the grassroots of our ministry. And the grassroots of our ministry is how we love at home, how we lead at home, and how appreciative we are of what God has given us there. Danny, in our in our final moments uh, together, I want you to just kind of look into this camera. And there are people right now, there are tears streaming down their face. They did not know that God was going to meet them tonight with a word of deliverance and a miracle that's looking right back at the screen. Would you just pray a prayer of healing and salvation for the people all over the world tonight? Absolutely. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, Papa, just take these babies in your arms. Those of you who are listening to me right now and you've never been able to grasp Father God or this awesome God or this theological God, can you reach out tonight and hold the hands of a Papa who has loved you from the moment he formed you? He wants you tonight. He has paid the ultimate sacrifice for you. If you will accept what Jesus has done for you on the cross tonight, you will truly know what it means to breathe in that deep, deep breath of freedom. I, I just speak a blessing over everyone listening. I speak a blessing over those who've been broken, but most especially that one that right now is stretching forth that hand to say, I would like, I would like this Papa. Tonight, receive him in Jesus' name. Breathe deep and begin that rest. Begin that rest that you've so needed for so long in Jesus' name. Praise God. Denny, God bless thank you. you. For God those who you. want to stay connected, let's give God a great hand clap of praise for this man. Thank you so much thank you, thank for sharing your heart and being transparent. Thank you. And if you want more information, Go to Danny's website, get the book Masquerade. He's also an accomplished singer and songwriting. Get the resources, let them bless you, and know this, that no matter what the enemy has lied and said to you, you are worthy of love, you are worthy of affirmation, because he has made you worthy, and he's made you worthy because he is worthy. And here to sing a song to that truth, Eddie James singing, You Are Worthy.